Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be making this chainsaw stand for processing bowl blanks. So if you've ever processed a bowl blank standing up and cutting on the floor you'll know it's hard work on your lower back and your knees. So the idea behind this is it raises up to just around hip level so you can work nice and closely with the chainsaw close to your uh, body. Now I've cut in a, a little V section there for processing these awkward shaped bowl blanks so that naturally find a centre. We can find out where the pith is then, cut all the way through that pith, and we'll have half a bowl blank. So on the side then, I've got this little section where you can clamp this down and cut off the corners to make it more into the round. So we're going to have a look at how this is made, and the framework is a bit of a challenge I've set myself, so I've got some lap dovetails, through mortars and tenants with wedges, some mitre dovetails, so I'm going to go through the whole process of how I've made this and then we'll test it out at the end. Hope you enjoy. So I'm going to use the chainsaw to cut in that V section. So a very, very seasoned uh, chopping block I've had for about eight years. And after I remove the V section, I'm going to cut in a side slot so I can clamp bowls to the end. So starting to work on the framework then, I've cut my two legs then at these splayed angles and it's 30 degrees along the bottom and the top then. And I'm going to be having a cross beam. And if you've seen my... Woodworkers Day Out at Butterington Farm. This is very much the same sort of joints they use on their timber frame houses. Lap dovetail we're going to be using and we'll do a mortise joint then through the centre of this beam. So I'm going to show you how I've laid out this dovetail now. So what I've done is I've drawn that angle. Imagine that that's my leg in this section. I found the centre point of that leg by measuring the middle along that diagonal and Either side of the middle point then, I've measured 15 millimetres. So the bottom section of the dovetail is going to be 30 in total. And we just get a nice straight edge then from the corner, line them up. Same on the other side, and that'll give us this sort of angled dovetail. Now the outside of this then, is where I'm going to be cutting on. So on the outside of those lines, removing this section and that section. So we're going to do that on all four pieces and just to make it easier to cut out we're going to be using the bandsaw for this. So since we've got the cross beam sorted we're going to work on this top dovetail then to connect the top two pieces. I'm going to show you now how to lay out and cut a dovetail like this. So the first step then like this one I've measured in two inches from the end and I'm going to be using something called a tri-square to Score a line across, making sure of the, the squares nice and flat against that edge. I'm going to gauge the centre of that line, and either side of that line, then I'm measuring 12 millimetres. I'm going to be using a really, really handy tool called a bevel gauge. And what this does, I'll just show you with the one I've already cut, if you hold this up to the top, that gives you your angles of dovetails. So we're going to line that up with that 12mm mark. Nice straight line. Flipping around the other way. Nice straight line again. And we've got our dovetail laid out there. So we're going to be cutting away these sections now on the bandsaw. We've got all the joints cut for that first section. And I've found the centre line across this. And what we're going to do is trim along this line and the centre line just to remove this piece. And we're going to do that on all of the bits. That's just going to make these little lap dovetails a little bit easier to, to put in then. So you've got more gluing surfaces that way as well, which helps with the, the structure of this. laying out the joints with a carpentry pencil. I'm going to put little dots on the, the edges then of these boards. So it's always good practice at this point to label up your joints. So I'm just going to put letter A and an A by the side there. So when I come to fitting these later on, so making sure I'm going to get a nice tight fit with each of the joints, I know where these match up to. So what I meant by marking out the sides, I put two little witness marks there. On those witness marks then, can draw these lines across and I'll be able to pick up the other side of this then for my other side of the joint to make sure they're 
correctly in line. Before we start cutting the joints to put this all together, what I've done is a little dry run. So I've clamped them into place to make sure I'm happy where everything goes. And I've also gone around the joints with a little uh, marking knife there. And that's gonna help me then when I come to do my chiseling to find a registering point for the chisel to sit in. So we're gonna unclamp this now and start cutting these cross braces. Then we can get the, the top dovetail in. And I've already jumped ahead and cut out another dovetail for the top where this is gonna be going to our slope leg coming off to make that tripod. I need to establish now how far I'm gonna need to saw down. So you can set a marking gauge up to this thickness or place that against the edge. Screw across with our line there. Or you can use your finger as a gauge and score that down on your sides. So I'm gonna put my piece down between these two little bench dogs and use the side vise to clamp them in place. Using a tenant saw then on these lines that we've drawn out, using my little thumb knuckle there as a, a little gauge. This helps to, to start the cut off. So as soon as we've got our groove more accurately in there then, I'm gonna be looking either side of this line to make sure I'm sawing right down nice and accurately and stopping before I get too low down. Okay, I'm gonna do some cuts then in between just to make this easier to chisel away. Little chisel, join his mallet, going about half the distance down. Let's flip this guy round on the other side. You see I'm just a tiny bit shy of my line there. And you can see from the other side, I've got a little ways to, to go. I've got them all put together, fit nicely. I've noticed a little mistake with the top. Didn't take into account the angle there. It's really gonna bug me, so I'm gonna redo just this top bit. So to rectify my mistake, the angle's not meeting up. We're gonna be cutting some, what's known as mitered dovetails. And I've started out by cutting a little groove section there, and that's gonna match the angle of those blade leg legs coming out. And we're gonna need to remove these sections either side. So that's going to require us to cut two angled cuts. So we're going to do that by hand. We're going to cut on our lines then. And if we do that either side, you'll see that we'll get this mitered dovetail. So there we have it, mitered dovetail. And that's going to slot in then to the top of the legs. And we should, if we've done everything right, have a nice flush tight joint then with the top of the leg. Rather than chiseling out the whole section in end grain, I thought it'd be a little bit easier if I use my little palm router. So I've set that to the thickness of the actual tails itself. And I'm just gonna creep up to my edge and then finish it off with a, with a chisel. So a little bit of a looser fit than I would have liked, and that's because I had where a nail, previous nail would have gone through the piece by the looks of it, tore out a little bit either side where that nail was. So good enough to, to glue up and hold into place, but I think I would like it to be a little bit tighter. Well, we'll make it work. So I completed all the framework, so it's nice and nice and solid all together. And I've just knocked up two more sort of lapped dovetails. I haven't gone with the uh, the mitered lap ones for this one. I'll show you a way you can get around that. But this essentially will be connecting this panel piece off to my third leg coming out. Now the third leg I've got in the vise there ready. It's exactly the same size and angle as the other two. So rather than cutting a mitre into these, I've just cut a square shoulder there, the same sort of width as this would be, as it's all the way into the piece. If you didn't have a router and you wanted to cut these by hand, you could just use your tenant saw along the lines. Well, I'm cutting on the inside of my lines rather than on the lines itself. Uh, that way I can creep back with my chisel then to get a nice accurate joint. Fun part now in using the chisel, so I'm going down a tiny bit. Okay, good. So nice tight joint there. 
Let's give him a test fit. So we'll be going across like that into that A sort of frame section. Quite happy with that. We can start to see how this is coming together now. What we're going to need to do next is get a nice through mortise and tenant joint through the bottom section to this. And I want to do like a Japanese type wedge. So when this does move, which is bound to outside with the weather and the moisture content, I can just tap on those wedges to tighten those joints up. That makes you make a nice sturdy sort of structure. I'm just marking up my angles now. So I've got a little angle there marked the same angle as the leg. And just put a little dot there to where these beams are going to come across. So we're going to mark out some through tenants then. Let's get them cut. So I've got my cross beam then with the angle cut in. So I've gauged that onto my block of wood either side. And I've gone round then with a tri-square either side of the block from the centre point. Measured equal distance to the thickness of this either side of it. Shaded in the bit I need to get rid of. So we're going to do a traditional way. I'm going to drill two boring holes all the way through. Then we can use the chisel end to chisel in from either side to make this a through joint. And try and match the spade bit to the angle I need to drill it. So you can see, hopefully, that these have been chiselled all at an angle. So I'm just going to do the first sort of test fit. I reckon if you give them a little tap, they'll probably go on. A nice tight joint. Whoop. You can see it's all level there as well. Just marked out the central through mortises then on our cross beams. This one's slightly easier as we can just chisel through at a 90 degree angle rather than the 30. But I've found the centre, measured either side of that centre point, then the thickness and the width of my material. Scored a line round with a tri square, done exactly the same then on the back. So we can chisel halfway through, halfway through, meet in the middle and you'll avoid having tear out then. What we are going to do, is to make our lines a little bit easier, scrap board underneath, going to clamp this nice and tight, and we're going to drill all the way through. By having that scrap block underneath, should limit the tear out that we're going to get from the spade bit we're going to be using. We're going to chisel out this halfway through, flip around and do the other way. So I'm putting my chisel, the flat part of the chisel against the edge, getting them at 90 degrees and just to make this easier I've gone around with my little marking knife so I've got a little groove with my chisel can actually register and pop into and from the other side do exactly the same thing again that's where the marking out proves to be um, useful so you've accurately marked out it's going to be an easy job of finding the middle if you're off by a couple of millimeters it's quite difficult to line them up accurately So we've done those three mortises then on, on both of these. I've got them a, a nice tight fit onto these. So I'm just going to start working on where I want the wedges to go on either side of these now. So I'm going to do another three mortise at an angle for the wedge for the slope leg. And I'm just going to do a plain through mortise there with that little square. And you can see I've used a, a tri-square to, to mark these around. So I've got them on both sides. And I've used the bevel gauge then to help me with that angled tail. So I'm gonna do exactly the same sort of principle as I did on the joints in the leg beam. So all chiseled through, you can see that one's at the angle, and this one all the way through, just at 90 degrees. We're ready to put this all together now. So you can see those mitered dovetails, lap dovetails there, the through mortise and tenon coming through. I've just got a hammer down on these little wedges I've made either side it's there as well and they're going to tighten all these joints together so you can see how all these dovetails lock this entire piece together and that strut beam then going through the entire piece makes it a really really strong stable structure drill now from underneath so just driving in some wood screws so i can replace the block when it gets worn out and in testing i found it was really really easy with this v-section to cut either side of the pith made my job nice and easy rather than tackling the, the wrestling with the log and this one was quite easy to chop off the corners but i'm going to need a better way of holding it down so 
So a nice sign of a good shop. Shane saw these stringy shavings coming off. Really happy with how this is performed. It's going to make my life a lot easier rather than bending all, over all day, processing a day's worth of bull blanks. It's hard on your body. Certainly feel it the next day. And I'm still in my 20s, so that's only going to get worse. So this is going to be coming real handy for the future. So you can see, taking the pith out with this section. So I've got some pen blanks then I can cut from this and just burn the pith section. And two ash bull blanks ready to go. Now the uh, the side section, I'm going to come up with a better way of clamping that down, maybe like a hole fast. So I hope you've enjoyed tonight's project and you found it really useful, uh, especially the joinery sort of section. You could quite easily make the same sort of thing with some nails and screws without the complex joinery and you'll get the same effect, but I just wanted to challenge myself for tonight's project. So I hope you've really enjoyed. If you have enjoyed, please consider supporting me and subscribing to my channel by hitting the link below, as that really helps me out in getting more videos like this your way. Hope you have a great night. Dielchenvar, Nosta.